and reps. 16 Texas Administrative Code, Section 61.106. Hand wrap shall be restricted to no more than 20 yards of soft gauze, no more than two inches wide. 10 yards, roll of gauze, okay? So they're allowed two rolls of gauze for each hand. So then uh, the gauze shall be held in place by no more than eight feet of adhesive tape, no more than one and one half inch wide. The adhesive tape shall not cover any part of the knuckles when the hand is clenched to make a fist, one inch behind the knuckle, if you place simply your index finger, have them make a fist, place your index finger behind the knuckle, the tape should not pass your index finger. While a corner man is wrapping, he shall not apply any type of water, liquid, or material on the tape that is, stri that, that is strictly prohibited. Any type of water, liquid, material, any type of hardening of the, of the, of the surface of the, of the taping would be strictly prohibited. Okay, so uh, as Javier gets started, well, I'll be uh, kind of uh, walking you through uh, what he is doing and as far as uh, the hand wrapping process goes. As an inspector, we want to always be in plain view of the fighter and the, the actual uh, second uh, wrapping the hand, and, and you always want to be in plain sight. Don't let anybody get in. If, if, this, is a, if this is a high profile fight and the HBO wants to come in and say, hey, you're in the, you're in the way of our cameras, and you, know, you guys need to, to you know, move this. No, you're in charge of that dressing room. You're in charge of that fighter. You're in charge of the safety of that fighter. So what we're actually doing, what we're actually doing is, is uh, Javier is actually getting started on the hand wrapping process where he's applying gauze to the base of the hand, to the wrist of the hand, and all you're basically looking for is just to make sure that he's, he's not putting nothing on there. And we'll let him continue on with his, with his wrapping process. Um, so what he's about to do right now is apply the, the actual, uh, the pad that he's created, and that's, uh, it can, as you can see, he's applying it to the base of the hand and all the way up to the knuckles, and he's wrapping it over to protect the base of the hand. Yes, the pad would be part of the 20 yards, yes, Henry, yes. So as, as Javier is wrapping, you, as you can see, he's, he's Xing out the, the base of the hand. That provides extra support to, to the base of the hand for the impact as far as when the fighter is punching. It limits the impact to the base of his hand. Therefore, it, uh, it lessens the chance of him uh, fracturing his hand. As you can tell, he wants to protect the knuckles as well. The knuckles are a very sensitive area of the hand as well, and, and uh, you can bust out your knuckles. That's why we, we put a little extra uh, padding up towards the knuckles and the base of the hand. You want to limit the blunt force that's, that's uh, created when you're punching, that's created uh, coming back to the back of your hands. The wrist is a very important part of the hand as well, too. You don't want to uh, fold your wrist over and, and cre create a wrist fracture. So you can tell Javier's uh, done this. This is actually his first time doing it, so uh, he's a little nervous. <laughs> Not really. Actually, he's, he's uh, one of the faster rappers I've seen. As you see, he's applying the tape now, and uh, he's carefully uh, getting that tape around the wrist area. Again, uh, sturdying up that wrist area for as for, uh, so he doesn't... Uh, you know, fold over his wrist. Now what he's gonna do, he's, he's gonna flip the hand over, right there, he's flipping the hand over and he's applying, he's applying the tape in between the fingers. Now when we're applying tape in between the fingers, we, we wanna limit the tape in between the fingers. We wanna make it as small as possible going through the fingers. That way, we, we do not cover any any part of the any part of the knuckle area with the tape. As Javier says, really important at this part right here. He, he's 
uh, turning over the tape and then he's actually measuring how far back he is from the knuckle so he, he ensures that the tape will not go over the knuckle. As an inspector, you're, you're watching this very carefully and, and at any time you can ask the cut man or the second to stop if you feel that he is doing something um, that is not right and you correct it right on the spot instead of letting him go on and then he's gonna have to tear apart the whole wrap. And as an inspector, don't be afraid to, to tell these guys, hey, you know, stop, this is not right, okay? It, it, you know, it's better to tell him at the point that he's doing something wrong than it is for him to tear apart a whole hand wrap and go another 10, 15 minutes wrapping one hand. Yes. Okay, so now he's applying the, the tape over in between the middle of the fingers, and now he's securing that tape with another piece of tape. Now he's gonna go through the middle. He's applying the tape. As you can tell, he folds it over, and he makes it as small as possible going through the fingers. So he does not apply any tape to the knuckle. He's coming over and he's tying down that tape too. It's very important that we get it really tied up by the knuckle area uh, to, ensure, to ensure the wrap does not loosen up on, on, on the fighter. He goes, he's gonna take the final strand through the last pinky. He's gonna wrap it down and he's gonna tie it down. Now he's gonna actually seal the wrap here. And what I mean by seal the wrap, he's gonna, he's gonna ensure that the, the wrap does not, is not gonna come apart and he's gonna, he's gonna uh, make sure that the, the wrap is totally enforced and, and is, is a clean wrap. Notice he's going around the thumb, protecting the thumb, and uh, that differ, uh, differ, differentiates in MMA and in boxing. A lot of MMA fighters do not like the thumb wrapped, okay, because it limits their, their holding technique. So uh, you will see a difference in between an MMA wrap and a, and a boxing wrap with the thumb. They're both good wraps. You don't, they don't have to wrap the thumb. So, so now what he's gonna do, he's gonna adjust the wrap. He's asking the, the, the fighter, you know, how's the, the wrap feel? And he'll do the final, the final adjustments on the wrap. Uh, the trainer always wants to talk to the fighter while he's doing the wrap, make sure he's not wrapping the hand too tight. Gus is my inspector in charge right now. Here, Gus, hold on, hold on. Now he's gonna show you how he seals the wrap to ensure that there's no tampering with the wrap after the wrap is done. So um, again, we're just standing over him, we're watching everything, every movement he does. And um, uh, how I start is always grip it. You know, I make sure nothing's there. I ask him to make a fist, you know, touch the top, put like, you know, a decent amount of pressure. You, don't, you can feel something's underneath there. Flip it over and I, what I do is I always stick my hand underneath as far as I can, you know, make sure nothing's under there. And again, with the wrist, just make sure you just, you know, Grab some right there. So then you just get your marker. Make a happy face. Happy face. <laughs> you open your hand all the way. You draw three lines. That just indicates, you know, where the uh, actual the tape was across the uh, knuckles. And then you're going to go across, go back over, three lines. And then right here, you just put an X and your initials. That's it. So the purpose of marking the hand wraps is to make sure the seal has not been broken, okay? Once, he, once the fighter says and the cornerman says, I'm done with my wraps, I'm ready for them to get checked off, you wanna seal that wrap with your stamp. Gus sealed it off with his stamp, so it's his responsibility now. So after the wrap's been sealed, 
Right here we go into, after observing the application of a wrap, the inspector will mark sign, sign the wrap with a permanent marker on both sides of the hand in such way that if the wrap were later altered, it would be recognizable. Okay, so that's what he did right there. Once the contestant, this is very important here, guys, because I see a lot of this happen. Once a contestant's hands are wrapped, the contestant must not leave the dressing room unless escorted by an inspector. So any fighter that leaves that dressing room after his wraps have been inspected can be disqualified from their match, or they can be asked to rewrap. Then if, if a wrap has started without the supervision of a TDLR inspector present, instruct them to have the wraps removed and to restart the wraps in the presence of a TDLR inspector. Very important. What happens when there's fighter, There's a whole team of fighters in the back, that's your question, a whole team of fighters in the back and they want to walk out with their other teammates. If they are already wrapped and you have already sealed their wrap, no, you tell them that you ask them to stay in the back, okay? Robert, he just now wrapped that hand correct, but there was nothing set for his opponent's coach to come over. He then comes over to say, I didn't see, take those off. Coach cannot dictate that, right? A coach cannot dictate that. If there was an inspector present while he was wrapping hands, that would be a legal hand wrap. Now, world title fights, it's a different story, yes, but we go over those rules at the weigh-in, and at the weigh-in, we ask each corner would they be inspecting the other corner's hand wraps? I uh, normally, per, uh, personally, do every, as soon as a uh, trainer wraps the guy, fighter's hand. I always make sure to uh, ask the fighter if, before I signed, make sure if it feels good. Because a lot of the times, the uh, trainer check this wraps and they always make sure you know he just touching you know, okay you're good to go and later on 20 minutes as soon as he got the wraps the fighter comes to me you know can I get this read done I ha it happens a lot of times to me so I just think I just wanted to share that I think it's very important to ask the fighter as well if, if he feels good as far as tape because sometimes it's just like he put put too much pressure on the tape and it's just way too tight so they just want to redo the wrap up yes your, your more experienced trainers would traditionally talk to the fighter as they're wrapping throughout to make sure that everything feels good. You know, I started with the wrist, I check, hey, does that feel good? Finish the thumb, hey, does that feel good? I do the knuckles, hey, how you feeling? Good. When I go to finish my final tie off with the tape, feel good? Yeah. That way that kind of limits it. So what I would say from, from the, pers the other side of the fence, as you see them there wrapping, you know, don't hesitate to say, hey, make sure you guys are communicating or make sure, tell the fighter, hey, make sure everything feels good before I sign off because you don't want to make any changes after that point. So it was a good point. I was in a corner of a title fight and the manager from the opposite team came over and watched the wraps. He said it was fine. He took off and left, but I asked him before he left if he wanted to inspect the wrap on the gloves. He said, no, I just wanted to inspect the wraps, not, not to tape over the gloves. Well, about 10 minutes later, the boxer, I handed him the gloves and they taped it. I signed off on him and then he wanted me to, uh, he came back and he wanted me to take off the tape because he wasn't there to see the tape around the gloves, the boxing gloves. And I told him they were already on. I was there, I handed him the gloves. So it was gonna stay like that. You're exactly right on that. You're exactly right on that, uh, Bobby. Uh, if you were in the presence while they were putting on the gloves, in, in the instance you're talking about, you probably had control of the gloves at all times. You hand the gloves to the fighter, you witness the, the gloves being put on, and you witness the gloves being taped on. There's no reason why you should make that, you should make that uh, fighter take those gloves off and, and restart that. Uh, while we're on the glove situation, um, the gloves nowadays are made are made so well, they're made really good that you don't need to be skinning these gloves back, guys. These, these gloves, you know, the skinning of the gloves, we don't need to happen. We need to make sure that the, the laces of the gloves come all the way down to the wrist, okay? And they get tied off at the wrist. Taping of the glove, make sure that the tape is right at the wrist line as well. We don't need tape above the wrist, 
peeling the glove down, okay? We need it right at the wrist line. And then when the marking of the glove, of course, we're gonna mark the double line, which seals the glove, and then you're gonna put Tex coming straight across, okay? And then you're gonna turn the glove over, you're gonna X the bottom of the glove and initial it. That means you sealed that glove, okay? Robert, so he now is wrapped, right? Yes. And he's the swing bout now. Okay. Now he's end up at 12 o'clock at night from when he wrapped sure. up at six. Is he allowed to take those off and rewrap because he wants them off now to? That's all up to him. Long as there's a there's an inspector present when he rewraps, it's all up to he, him. He could take them off without us and then put it. We just have to exactly. Yes. Okay. Yes. It's better for them to ask us, but yes, he he can't take them off without us. And then come back and say, hey, listen, I'm going to rewrap now that I'm the swing bout. I'm going to rewrap at the end of the night. Yes, sir. What are some of the what are some of the tactics that uh, rappers might try to get away with that are illegal? Uh, tape over the knuckles, um, sticking sticking uh, foreign objects inside the the, the padded area of, of the wrap where where I mentioned where Javier had made the the, the little uh, pad. The, there's some hardener that they sell that's uh, like in a sheet form, and they'll stick that little sheet in there, and once the fighter starts sweating and his hands get moist, that hardener will harden up in there and, and it'll form. It's kind of like uh, what they found in uh, the wraps of uh, Antonio Margarito. Uh, yeah. right. Hairspray. Hairspray. There's, there's fighters that will, I mean, uh, cornermen that will use hairspray to harden up the wrap. You know, any any type, any you know, you guys got to be aware of that at all times. So that's why we're asking you guys: do not let this fighter leave your presence. You want him in the same area where you're at. That way, you can be observant of what's going on. This is the you know, obviously it's common knowledge. This is the area that's going to make impact on the fighter, right? So, what what I think we should all do our diligence is really policing, like he's saying, these these knuckle guards. The problem is you've got some coaches that will pre-make them. They'll make them the night before. Sometimes, like if in an amateur show, if I got six guys fighting, I'll pre-make them just because I'm I'm going to be rapping for two hours anyway, right? But at the end of the day, I think that the diligence that we have now as inspectors, and it's one that I, I don't think we should sleep on, is making sure that these are checked. And I can tell you, and this isn't a knock against anybody, but this is just a, a, a call to alert, right? Is I've gone to a lot of shows, amateur, pro, and, and amateur boxing is totally different than what we're doing here. But they don't even check it. They don't even look at it, right? It just goes right into the wrap. So just wanted to call that out. Sure. So what do you think about he, he folds the, the knuckle guard? Some guys uh, twist them and put them on, you know. They twist, uh, the twist the tape or the? No, the, go the gauze, the actual knuckle protector. They'll twist it. And gauze is gauze. <laughs> Gauze is gauze. It's not, they're not going to gain any type of advantage by twisting gauze. Gauze is gauze. Just like tape. We had an incident on a, big, on a big title fight in Dallas where they twisted the tape in between the knuckles and the other camp made a big deal about it. It's just twisted tape. Twisted tape is twisted tape. It's not going to knock you out. And if it knocks you out, then you don't need to be there. <laughs> Length limit on the tape that goes around the glove, like f you say, it starts from the wrist back. Right. Is there a, the, a limit, or do you? No, we just way? we just want to make sure we we cover the whole distance between the the wrist and and the back of the glove. We want to make sure the whole the the whole area is covered. We don't want no tag sticking out or anything like that. The the laces or anything like that. Yeah. My second time I started, uh, uh, they put me in a big show. It was like, but it was a big show, Laredo. Uh, and I remember I didn't I I barely knew the rules. I was nervous, and I remember you, you had my back, so I just want to put that out there. I remember if I ever had something, and they knew right away. They were like, "You're a rookie. I ain't never seen you before." And they're gonna treat you like that for a while until your face gets familiar. And uh, like I said, don't say nothing unless you really know. But if you don't know, like I said, Robert came in there, and and made me feel better, and my nervousness went away. And Robert explained the rules, and got that guy to calm down. Thank you. Thank you, Pete. Any more questions? Aladdin, he just make a really good point about that. Um, I remember because I, you know, I remember when he started. I was working, you know, 
or maybe a year, maybe two years, maybe three years before him. Um, uh, and I think he made a really point, a uh, really good point about, you know, he barely knew the rules at that point. And I just wanted to um, uh, say that I think about in this scenario about learning how to, how to do the rules and all that. And I think, the, um, I'm sorry, what's his name? Um, the referee. Where you at? Is he gone? Okay. Uh, he taught. Uh, he got a lot of good points about rules and everything, which I think a inspector should know already by then. So uh, I think it's it, it would be a great idea uh, if uh, there would be a kind of a training or certification before a. I know you know you get the guys and throw them out there and you know you, we we're there to help them out and everything. But I think it would be a lot if we would do something more often like this kind of meetings. I know we're early starting. I think it's a really good point. And so we start getting to know the rules and as far as wrapping hands and as far as the regulations for the state of Texas. So uh, I think he made a good point. You know when you know you just get thrown out at them in the field and then just don't know. And I think you, you should get a little bit more. Rely, rely on your veterans that are out there. You know, you yes. don't know something, rely on your veterans that are out there. They'll, they'll clear it up really quick. Okay, guys, I got to wind down. Uh, handing it back over to Susan.